Are your students struggling with writing a scientific explanation using the claim evidence reasoning format? No worries. Today, I'm going to take you through how to easily help your students write a scientific explanation using the claim evidence reasoning format. And I have seven steps that will help them in that process. Hi, I'm Christy. I'm a middle school science teacher with over 20 years experience in the classroom, and I love helping other teachers empower their students, teaching them skills of success. Now, if you find this video was helpful, please go ahead and share it with your other teacher friends. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. So that way you're aware of other videos just like this that are coming out to you. Okay, let's go in and get started. When writing a scientific explanation for a chemical reaction, the first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to identify the question. So here is an experiment done with copper chloride and aluminum. And if I look right here, I can see that this is the question. Does a chemical change occur if you mix copper chloride and aluminum? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify the question and we're gonna put it right here on our little template. Now that you have the question, you know what you're looking for. So we're looking for evidence of a chemical change, a chemical reaction. So we're gonna look at our data. That's where we wanna be looking, our observations. We're gonna be looking at the reactants, what we have at the beginning of the experiment, and we're gonna look at our products, what we have after the chemicals have been mixed together. So we have our reactants and our products here, and I'm just gonna highlight them so they're easier to see. And we're gonna be looking at, is there a difference? Have they changed? Are they staying the same? And what does that mean? So first let's go ahead and look at appearance. We have that the copper chloride is clear and transparent, the aluminum is shiny, malleable, and thin, and that together it's cloudy. Now, I could put that as evidence, but reasoning, what does that mean? Appearance doesn't really mean anything according to our evidence of a chemical reaction. So not gonna be looking at the appearance. It's there, but I'm not gonna use it to determine if a chemical change has happened. Next, I'll move on to the temperature. The temperature at the beginning is 23 degrees, at the end it's 72. Now that's a significant temperature change, an increase. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that as one of my evidences. And what does that mean? Well, that indicates a change in temperature and in this case, also an exothermic reaction. Okay, so I have my evidence and reasoning. There's one of them. Now let's look at color. We have vibrant blue and silver, and now it is a grayish blue, dark red and silver. So it went from a blue and silver to a red. Now that is a color change that is uncommon. So we're looking for uncommon color changes, not something that you would find if you mixed paint together. So for example, if it went from blue and red and made purple, well, that's something you can do with food coloring. So that doesn't really indicate a color change, but going from blue and silver to a dark red, now that's unusual and that would indicate a color change. So I'm gonna record that evidence. And why am I doing that? Because again, color change is evidence of a chemical reaction. And we're looking at the state of matter here, liquid, solid, liquid, solid, and gas. Now, when you're state of matter, what you're looking for is, do you have two liquids and are you making a solid? Because if you start off with two liquids and you create a solid, well, that could be an indication of precipitate. In this case, one of my reactants is a solid. So I'm not going to see a ch uh, evidence of a chemical change with that one. Mass, I have a mass of 73, mass of 0 0.2, and overall the mass is 72.7. But notice I also have an other that there's bubbles and steam. Now bubbles and steam are indication of gas formation, which is evidence of a chemical change. So I am gonna write down that bubbles and steam were produced. All right, so I have my question. I went through my reactants and my products and compared them. And I recorded my information here on my evidence and reasoning little um, graphic organizer. What I'm gonna do now is now I'm going to see 
is there evidence, enough evidence to support a claim of a chemical change or is there evidence to support a claim that a chemical change did not occur? In this case, I have enough evidence that a chemical change did occur. So I can use sentence stars to help me out. When writing a claim, it's important to put part of the question into your claim. And the question again is, does a chemical reaction occur if you mix copper chloride and aluminum? So here is a claim set in starters to help you out when you mix blank and blank, a chemical change. And in this case, remember, I'm going to say does occur. So here is my claim. Now, remember in this claim, I'm not saying the word because. There's no reason to put the word because. Because when you put the word because, after that, you're telling why. Well, that's what your evidence and reasoning sentences are for. So a claim is just a statement. When you mix these two chemicals, a chemical reaction occurs, period, done. Now I got to put my evidence and I collected here three different evidences. The evidence has to come directly from the data table. I'm not going to say that the temperature increased. I need to actually use the actual numbers. I'm not going to say the color changed. I'm going to use the actual colors and I'm going to use that there was actually bubbles and steam. So the words that I need to have here are the actual numbers, colors, observations that are found in the actual data table. It's not enough to say the temperature changed. How do you know that? You need to actually write the actual temperature at the beginning and the end to prove that the temperature changed. So evidence is all about proving what you're seeing, your observations. And again, you can use sentence starters here according to the data, during the experiment, during the investigation. So I'm going to go ahead and write um, my evidence and I'm going to include all three of those evidences. Okay, so I have my evidence, three sentences, one for each particular evidence. I include the actual numbers, the actual colors, and I said bubbles and steam. Reasoning links the evidence to the claim. It explains why you use that evidence. Why did I include those actual temperature numbers? Why did I include those actual colors? Why did I talk about bubbles? And that's right here where I have my reasonings. What am I looking for? I'm looking for evidence of a chemical change. It's what I already know the evidence to be. Evidence like energy change, gas formation, precipitate, odor change. Those are the things that I was looking for for my reasoning. And again, I can use my sentence starters. This indicates, this supports the claim, this is important or I know. So I have that, but also to reasoning, you want to wrap it up. You want to draw that concluding sentence. The therefore I can conclude or therefore I know. So what you want to do is you're wrapping up your conclusion by restating your claim one more time. Okay, so you have your question. You stated your claim after looking at the experiment. You wrote your evidence, which has the actual numbers, your reasoning. Now you're going to put it all together into one paragraph because a scientific explanation is a paragraph. It's one paragraph. It's not separate sentences. So you're just going to copy. If you have a, a digital way, you can just copy and paste it. We have our question here. And now I'm just going to copy and paste all my sentences, but putting it together so that it is one paragraph long. And now I'm going to go ahead and read through it. It's always important to read through the paragraph after you've put everything together to see if it flows or if you need to add extra words. So the paragraph says, when you mix copper chloride and aluminum, a chemical reaction does occur. During the investigation, the temperature increased from 23 degrees Celsius to 72 degrees Celsius. The color also changed from blue and silver to a dark red. Finally, bubbles and steam were produced. I know that a change in energy, a color change, and gas formation are indications that a chemical change has occurred. Therefore, I can conclude that mixing copper chloride and aluminum produces a chemical reaction. Now, one more thing you might want to do at the end is do a little self-assessment and check yourself off. Did you include the names of the chemicals in the experiment for your claim? Check. Does it state if a chemical reaction occurred or not? Yes. Does it actually answer the question? Yes, it does. Evidence states where the information comes from according to the data during the experiment. In other words, you start the sentence off. Yes. Includes observations found in the actual data table. Yes, I have the actual numbers. Includes actual numbers when appropriate. Yes, I did. 
And then finally, the reasoning. Explains how the evidence supports the claim. I did, I put no. States why the evidence is important. I did not put that part. Includes an including sentence. Yes, I did. And mechanics. You're gonna be checking for spelling errors, grammar, easy to read. Once you have it all done, you feel like you're, you checked it off, then you are good to go. And that is how to write a scientific explanation for a chemical reaction. For more claim and evidence reasoning practice examples like the one you saw in this video, go ahead and check out the description where I have a link to not only this claim evidence reasoning practice, but other practices as well. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.